32 past the hour, we have breaking news. We have a new statement from Justice Clarence Thomas reacting to a ProPublica report that he accepted lavish trips and other hospitality from a billionaire Republican donor for more than 20 years without disclosing it. Joining us now, NBC News Justice and Intelligence Correspondent Ken Delanian, Joyce Vance, a former U.S. attorney who is now a law professor at the University of Alabama and co-host of the Sisters in Law podcast, and Brendan Buck, former communications advisor to House Speaker John Bayer and Paul Ryan. Joyce and Brendan are both MSNBC contributors. So, Ken, what did Claire Thomas have to say? Jose, the justice says in a statement, I'm just going to read it to you, Harlan and Kathy Crow are among our dearest friends, and we've been friends for over 25 years. As friends do, he continues, we've joined them on a number of family trips during the more than quarter century we've known them. He says, earlier in my tenure at the court, I sought guidance from my colleagues and others in the judiciary and was advised that this sort of personal hospitality from close personal, personal friends who did not have business before the court was not reportable. He, he continues, I've endeavored to follow that counsel throughout my tenure and have always sought to comply with the disclosure guidelines. He adds, these guidelines are now being changed as the committee of the Judicial Conference responsible for financial disclosure for the entire federal judiciary just this past month announced new guidance. And it is, of course, he says, my intent to follow this guidance in the future. So what he's talking about here are luxury trips that were paid for by his friend, a billionaire Republican donor, Harlan Crow, including, and this is reported by ProPublica, uh, one, one vacation in, to Indonesia in 2019 valued at more than a half a million dollars. He flew on a private jet, there was a private yacht, a uh, private chef, and so, you know, extreme luxury travel here paid for by his friend Har Harlan Crow. and what Clarence Thomas is saying is that there was no requirement for him to disclose it, so he didn't disclose it. Now the rules have changed and he plans to disclose uh, future trips on private jets uh, uh, when those happen, I'll say. And so, Joyce, what are the disclosure rules for Supreme Court justices? Well, the disclosure rules would clearly have required Justice Thomas to disclose this sort of travel. But of course, as we've been discussing, Jose, for a while now, there are no clear ethical guidelines for Supreme Court justices like there are for the lower courts. It suggests that Justice Thomas knows how vulnerable he is after yesterday's reporting from ProPublica, which sort of lays bare the, as Ken points to, extreme nature of this sort of travel. Personal hospitality, which is what the justice is relying on here, that's a, a, a meal with a close friend or maybe a weekend at someone's lake house. What Justice Thomas fails to acknowledge is that he didn't meet Harlan Crow until after he had gone to the Supreme Court. And the travel that's involved here was not only luxurious on many occasions, it involved rubbing shoulders with people who had conservative litigation interests before the Supreme Court. So it should have been disclosed. There may be other implications like tax consequences. And I read into uh, the fact that he's released this statement, the fact that he knows that this is a serious problem. So, Brian, I mean, a Gallup poll last fall found that 40% of Americans, only 40% approve of the U.S. Supreme Court. It's a record low. How can reports like this have an impact on, I don't know, the faith Americans have in the high court? Yeah, I, I read his response there that he knows that this is potentially very damaging to the court. Uh, I wouldn't uh, be surprised at all if this leads to some meaningful reform either within the court uh, or to Congress. I, look, I think the real scandal here is that there are no real limits on, on what you can accept as a gift as a Supreme Court justice. I, I find that absolutely crazy. As someone who spent a lot of time in the, in the House of Representatives, you couldn't accept more than a coffee mug or a T-shirt. Uh, and, and certainly just the idea that you could just disclose it and that's fine is, is insane to me. Um, I think there needs to be real reform here. Uh, the, the idea that someone is your friend and therefore they can spend whatever money they want on you um, is silly. I think we all have friends. All of our friends don't pay for everything that we do. Uh, so this is pretty serious. Now, whether or not Congress is able to act and, and, and come together in a bipartisan way to get anything done, I probably had, uh, an open question and we could be skeptical of that. But I think this, uh, this story and, and what we're learning about how the court operates could lead to some serious changes. And I mean, Joyce, what would serious changes look like there? You know, the, 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 uh, he was talking about in his statement about all well, those changes coming up in the last month. What are those changes and what should changes look like? 
Right, so there is a process underway where they're revisiting this notion that there's a carve out for expenditures made by close personal friends. But you know, the rest of the federal judiciary operates under different sorts of rules. It's an interesting question how carefully they observe those, those rules. But I can recall my father-in-law who was an 11th Circuit judge, the Federal Court of Appeals that covers Florida, Georgia, and Alabama. And I can recall him making a point of not permitting his best friend to buy his lunch at one point when I was with them because he was so concerned about even the appearance of impropriety. It's not asking too much to expect that from our federal judges and the Supreme Court justices most of all. So real reform would be meaningful reform. It would require the justices to acknowledge their special role, their special responsibility. You know, Justice Thomas is the extreme example here. It's possible that there may be others, although I doubt there's anything that comes close to this in severity. Justices should not put themselves in connection with people who have litigation interests in front of them. That's what's damaging the court's reputation, and it'll be up to this chief justice to fix that problem. Ken Delaney and Joyce Vance, Brennan Book, thank you so very much. And we turn now to a new 